The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. As we usually do, we're going to start out the day looking at the German DAX and the FTSE with, from the UK. As you can see, both of those completed ABCD patterns yesterday. And true to form, away they went. We had some wild action in that S&P yesterday, folks. It dropped uh, 60 handles from the high. Down up there at 38.56, uh, all the way down to 37.92, and then bada bing, bada boom, look where it is. It's coming back right away. I think it's waiting for that 16, uh, the 13,599 level to be hit in the NASDAQ. If anything's going to happen, that's the big one that I'm paying very close attention to. But there's something else that's even more important. And that is we're going to have Rich is going to call in for just a minute to tell us what's going on in the silver market. I got no less than three emails about this over the last few days. And I want to bring it up so you folks can take a look at it. Basically, it's from uh, a uh, – I don't know where even where it's from. Where does it say where it's from? Uh Oh, gold charts, uh, gold charts or us or something like that. They're showing that uh, the silver has had a huge amount of buying coming in. In other words, a half a billion uh, silver, which is uh, two, 20 million ounces, 60 metric tons of silver. Um, uh, humans produce about 2.2 million ounces of new silver per day. So that's a 10-day uh, production. And the way that they buy this, and, and Rich is going to try to explain it to us, is through these derivatives. It's not showing you know, on the CME because the CME have limits on what you can buy. And on March the 15th, all these things are going to change, and they're going to have much stronger and much tighter control over you know, position limits. When we first started trading beans, you know, way back uh, when I first started trading beans back in the 60s, the position limit was 300 contracts. And uh, I think it's well over 1,200 now, if I'm not mistaken. The last time I checked, it was it was 1,200. But, you know, with the number of vo much of volatility and the people coming into the market, it could be a lot higher. Mr. Z would probably know that, and I'm sure Rich knows. But uh, this is what we're going to be discussing when Rich comes in. Also, we're going to have uh, Norm Winsky is going to call call in at uh, her, his a little bit before his regular time. He's scheduled earlier today because he's got some things that he thinks is very, very important. And, uh, you know, we're having these markets, uh, you know, banging up against new highs. So we want to be really uh, uh, looking at what these cycles are. And, you know, maybe they'll give us a, a little clue of uh, what we're what we're looking for. Now, one other thing that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention, and this is from uh, our good friend over in the city of the wind, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I wanted to show you this because this is what got me interested in astrology many years ago. This, um, in this fact, back this was back in the uh, in the uh, mid '70s before I even met. Uh, uh, Dr. Miller, but Dr. Miller, when I first started to write the book in 86, uh, hey, we got Rich Anderson on the line right now. Rich, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. Doing great. Rich, I was telling the folks about this silver situation. Can you tell us, um, you know, you and I talked about this yesterday. Could you repeat to the folks what you taught me, what we you told me yesterday? Before that, we have a question. What's the limit position now in soybeans? Do you know, Rich, is it still 1,200? Uh, I believe it's it's I believe it's more than that. And if you're a, if you're a commercial hedger, there are ways around that. Oh, uh, sure, sure, yeah. So they, the CFTC with the new leadership right, will be coming out with uh, I think stricter, uh, harder guidelines on March 15th. So that's something to watch for. Um, but it's I, I believe it's more than that. And for commercials, you know, they can claim. They're hedging stuff, and there is no practical. There is no practical limits, uh, and and indeed they have to. I mean, you look at the sale of corn so far to China, uh, um, or the excuse me, the sale of beans is is uh, 12 million metric tons. 
No, the corn. It's 12 million metric tons, and but there's 8 million in the unknown. Well, you know, that's got to be hedged off somehow. You know, the commercials would go out of business if they weren't allowed to, you know, put on the positions. And then mm. if, if for a speculator that wants a bigger position than the limit, they just do a swap with a with a Cargill or, or with a J.P. Morgan, and that isn't traded on the exchange, but it's it's off the futures prices. But that doesn't count in the open in, in your limits, and that's how hedge funds get around. You know, swaps is how they get around the limits because then they're not actually carrying the position on their books. It's versus a grain company or somebody else. Okay, that's great. Now tell us about how the people work these swaps in the silver market. Well, a swap in any market, whether it be silver or oil or grain, you you have to you don't get to play that game unless you have large capital. In large capital, we're usually talking hundreds of millions of dollars, and that's okay. to guarantee the trade. In the old days, in the Enron days, way back when. They didn't have any margin attached to it, and, of course, Enron blew up, and and that reverberated through all the oil industry. Nowadays, when you put on a swap, if the position is moving against you, you have some margin requirements that you're required to move to the other party. And so it's rather than going through the exchange being the clearinghouse, it's just two parties trading with each other, and because they have huge amounts of capital, you're not concerned about them fulfilling their other side of the trade. For us regular people trading through the exchange, the exchange is the, the, the intermediary, and we don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good. I, I didn't realize they could did all these things because, you know, these things weren't available years ago, and now they, they certainly are. So, uh, but, but if the silver is really going to go up, I mean, there's going to be some price action to the upside if they've done this, correct? Right, and the, and the, and they're in the case yeah. of the, uh, and in case of uh, like uh, the the ETF world, the, the SLV silver that showed such a large increase the other day, that's all silver bullion in London, and so that's managed by J.P. Morgan. Now they, they they don't do it out of the goodness of their heart; they're getting 50 basis points a year. That's not bad, and, and plus they're probably making money on the spread. They arranged a very large trade with some other party, and it's just a bookkeeping entry from one bank to another bank. Okay. Well, the reason why I ask, Rich, is I, you know, when I chatted yesterday, I got four, none less than four emails asking about this, and all these people are this 20 million ounces, or uh, excuse me, uh, 20 million, yeah, 20 million ounces. We're coming into uh, why didn't the market go go higher? And uh, frankly, I didn't know the answer to that because I'm, you know, I'm just a technician, and that's why I called. Right. Hey, listen, I wanted to thank you for, uh, you know, telling us about that because that, that's really good to know. But, by, but by it, the way, one last thing: on February 18th and 19th, the USDA has their meeting, and one of the speakers will be talking about how they collect their data, how they analyze their data, and the impact on the market. So they, the guys that are interested in reports, it's a teleconference this year. Listen to it. Okay. Thanks, Rich. We'll have you on again soon. Right. Take care. We'll be right back, Bye. folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245, and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Norm Winsky from Astro Trends down in Naples, Florida. Rich, hold it. We've got a – okay, go right ahead, uh, Mr. Uh, – Winsky, you're on the air. Thank you very much, Larry. Okay, so, I, I, I'm sorry, before go you ahead. start, before we before you start, we have two questions from this. It's the same question from two different people. Is do you have one thing that you focus on? One or two things that you focus on uh, to get a trend change? I mean, that's that's the question. Yeah, the planets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The Mr. Planets. Gans okay. said that the key times. Oh, I, I. If you connect the dots, there with what Gan said, the time is more important than price, and that he was an astrologer. Then you have to come to the conclusion: the key times give you the key prices, and the okay. way you get that is by looking at the the planets. It's Sounds all very good to simple. Be. Well, you're on the, you're on the clock, so go ahead, my friend. All right, I got my notes on the screen. Hopefully, everybody can see those. I suggest I would suggest recommend that you take a screenshot of that because that's what we'll be following for the first part of my presentation here. Okay, well, these are the points that I had I showed uh, when I was on your show last. I believe that was the 12th of January. I did add one that we recently had, and uh, you'll, you'll, I think you'll find that interesting. And, of course, you know, these cycles repeat, and by looking at what happened in the past, the past is pretty, pretty loose to the future. We can, we can make forecasts based on how, they've been work, how they worked in the past. So, anyway, so now just to start out here now, we have on the AC, we have a lot of ACs here. That's after the close. We have an AM there. That's for the morning. And so I give you the day and what sort of time, time of day, you know, uh, general time of day it occurs. So we have the 11th after the close. That'd be the night of the 11th and into the uh, morning of the 12th. We had the Saturn line up with Uranus, and there you have these markets associated with those planets. And then we had a new moon the night of the 12th, and we you round up the usual suspects: your financials, financials, grains, precious metals, and because it was a Capricorn, we'll be looking at coffee. And Uranus in Taurus the night of the 13th. Uh, we had a lot of stuff here that when I was last on uh, coming up. Uranus in Taurus turning direct. That's one of my top things. When planets turn direct to retrograde. And the other top thing 
is when the planets get to zero latitude. That's a sort of equivalent to in the helio world there, uh, Uranus, the planet's going direct to retrograde. So anyway, Uranus has to do with copper and the Taurusable, you might guess, has to do with cattle. And then we also have cotton, which is Taurus, and the stocks. And we have the moon's north node with 120 degrees to where the moon was on the founding of our country, July the 4th, 1776. And so therefore, we look at U.S. financial stocks, T-bonds and U.S. dollar. And we have another point here for the U.S. with these stocks on the uh, morning of the 14th. That was uh, the night of the 13th into the morning of the 14th. So that's like a double point there. And then we had a big cluster over the weekend of the 15th. There you go. Venus is zero south latitude. And we have these markets, cattle, cotton, copper, stock, sugar, wheat. And then we had Jupiter 90 degrees to Uranus. That was historically been uh, when Jupiter and Uranus make a, an important angle. That's historically been important. Mr. Bradley in Bradley's book, their stock market prediction, devoted the whole middle part of his book to uh, ju uh, angles of Jupiter and Uranus to show how the stock market goes up and down with that angle. And with those planets, that was uh, based on that. <clears throat> excuse me, was the first uh, I based the, uh, to go buy my first stock ever when I was back in college there at age 21. I did uh, did quite well. I doing a, uh, bought a copper mining company. All right, here we go. Then Jupiter 120 to the U.S. Ascendant. That's another U.S. point. We have U.S. stocks, T-bonds, dollar. And then we had this uh, past weekend, we had Mercury. Uh, zero north latitude, that's your corn, soybeans, stocks, and wheat. The stocks respond, they are the big basket of everything, they respond to everything. Uh, all the other markets tend to be responding to a, a narrow filters. They only respond to certain things. So here's your uh, cattle. We had uh, this point here was Saturn lined up with the Uranus and Taurus the bull. Uh, that did not work. We have a mess. There we go. But when we got over here to the 14th, I mean, the uh, the 13th, opening the 14th, that was up here. That was your, oh, yeah, Uranus turning direct in Taurus. And that was the, that was a nice low. And then we had the next day. Norm, I give it, I'll Norm, give it one. Yes, sir. Norm, I have a, we have a question from uh, Philadelphia from Jeff. and he, he has a question about moon phases. He's on the line right now, I believe. Okay. Yes. Uh, hi, Larry. Thanks for taking the call. Uh, hi, Mr. Winsky. How are you? Fine, Jeff. Great. Uh, I, I had a simple question. Um, when you have a moon phase, like new moon, full moon, um, how uh, how much time typically do you expect to see the effects of that? I one think day. from looking at your charts, it's maybe just a day or two? That's it. One day. One day. Okay. One day. So when you... One day. Okay, if great. Right with, uh, that, if, that's, it's right uh, dying, I... if, it's, if it's right the day before or the day after, fine. If not, you know, either it's wrong or forget about it. So even if it happens the day before, uh, it's still pretty much a duration of approximately No, you have day, to look at the price section. I, obviously, you want to be, you know, uh, you'd like to see, let's say we got a moon there, and the market goes down, 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 and then you're the moon there, and then you just kind of go sideways like we did there. I don't know if you can see the screen or not, but uh, we had a bar after the low, which was close to the low, so I'd still consider... You know, buying it then if we we're on the lows, you know. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Continue, Bye. my friend. Go ahead. Go ahead, Renard. All right, so we got the cattle here. We had a point for the uh, Uranus going direct and Taurus the bull. That was an, a very nice low. Might have been, I don't know if it was the low of the month, but pretty close to it. You know, we had to, with next day, we're close, still close to the low, so... We had three points there for the weekend of the 15th, and those were all near the low. And then the and then the cattle started stampeding to the upside. You see that? All right, here's our coffee. There's our two points for coffee. We had the Uranus lined up with Saturn, which is coffee. And we're all, one uh, as kind of what Jeff was asking about. We're one day off the low there. That's still good. I'm going to stretch a bend of the rules just a tiny bit here because the next day the opening. Uh, which was uh, another window with, oh, with the new moon in Capricorn. We're basically f flat from that uh, d day before. So that's all part, part of a, see that as a part of a bottoming uh, formation there, you know, right? All 
All right, we'll move ahead here to the cattle. Uh, the copper, I got copper. Uh, we got a sharp. We like to see, I want to see markets go to an extreme. So sharp up, sharp down. Then we'd be looking for reversal. Well, the copper had a sharp down here into our first uh, window with Saturn lined up with the Uranus, which is copper. And we made a nice low there. And then we pop up and then we came back down our next window over the weekend of the 15th. And then we made another low there. And this yellow bar is because it was going sideways. For that window, we don't do sideways. You know, it's Newton's law. For every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. Here's the grains. Here's the corn, Larry. And here corn. is the here is the commercial. We have to pay some right. bills, Norm. We'll be back with you, Norm Winsky, at the break. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, talking with Norm Winsky of Astro Trans. Norm, would you like to continue? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so the corn you might remember was going up, up, up into the new moon, and that was a high day. And then we went uh, down, down, down until this past weekend. And so from high to low, it's about 50 cents. And that's pretty good. So there we go. We caught the high day on the right after. New moon was the night of the 12th. On the, if you sold there on the 13th, uh, you would have been uh, happy. And then we went down, and then we had a mercury point there. over this. I added that one. I didn't have that on the, on the show before. But uh, this is the same principles I talk about. All the time that Mercury has to do with the grains, 
And there you go. So there's your low there on the corn for now. I don't know what it's doing today, but they had, they had a nice up day yesterday. Here's the cotton. Was uh, taking a nap, so we're not doing anything. We have yellow bars there just to show. Probably not taking any signals here because it's too, too much too much sideways. You know, here's your gold. Had a little rally into the new moon. Made a little short term top and went back down. Here's the OJ. Made it came down into the new moon and then popped back up for a day or two. So you had a chance to make a little bit of money there. There's the silver. You were just talking about the silver. Had a little rally into the new moon, and that was kind of a short-term top. Did go a little bit higher the next day, and then down. Here's the beans. Uh, it, was, it was nothing but up, up, up for the beans into the new moon, and that was a high day. And then they dropped, as you have mentioned, uh, about a, a dollar and a half. That's a, that's a nice chunk of dough there. So it was about $7,500. And then they also bought them this past weekend on the Mercury, I think it was Mercury Zero North Latitude. That was one of my top things. Here's the S&P. We had lots of stuff for the S&P. Uh, we had a little bit of a pullback here into our uh, Saturn-Uranus uh, uh, alignment. Then it went sideways, so we do nothing there. Then it rallied up into we had the big uh, triple uh, triple point there between the 13th and the 14th for a little top there. And then we went down into the weekend of the 15th, and we had three points there for a possible low. And we did make because uh, it went down. We were looking for reversal, and so... It made us low there, and then we rallied up, and now we're we're looking at we were looking at this past weekend into Monday for a possible top, and we got that temporarily. It looks like though that's may get blown out today, so we'll have to have to see if it takes out uh, one of these points, if it takes out the price high there. That's an indication you might be accelerating to the upside, and you might get a a good run in the other other direction. Uh, there we go. Here's the sugar made a top there on a Venus point. Over the weekend of the 15th, I believe. And then down. Here's the T-Bonds. You're making a low there on our 13th, the 14th, uh, two points there. And here's your dollar. Made a low on the new moon. Oh, that was the new moon here on the, the going into the 13th. And then we had those points for the close of the 13th into the 14th. That's what that was on the bonds. There we had the new moon for the dollar on a low. And then the next day also... Uh, well, you had the, the 13th, 14th points there, and then up to the uh, weekend of the 15th, where we had a point there for the U.S. chart. And here's your wheat. Uh, so Venus is also involved with wheat. And so there's your new moon top, and you had a little pullback low, pullback for a day, and then back up for Venus over the 15th weekend, and then down for the Mercury point here uh, the past uh, weekend for a little, little low there, and the pop-up on Monday. Here's my, what you might, oh, here's the score. If you add up the green arrows and the red arrows, uh, we had uh, 36 winners, one miss out of 37. That's 97% roughly, so that's pretty good. And here's my, what you might call my Bradley model, but I do, do a lot of things different than Bradley did. Bradley inspired, you might say. I drew this blue line at the end of December there. And for the month of January, and you can see it's been following the blue, the black bars, the S&P 10-minute bars, and you can see it's been following that pretty well until now. That I may have a uh, a miss here if we blow out that low because that thing, that the indication here was that we would turn down. So we'll have to wait and see. Today is probably pivotal in the right regard. All right, here we go. Here's the uh, what's coming up uh, tonight. We have the uh, Jupiter to the U.S. Uranus, and so you'll be looking at U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and uh, US, oh, I got that twice. It should have been the U.S. dollar. That's a mistake. And then we have the full moon. We have a big cluster coming up in just a couple of days with the full moon in Leo the night of the 28th, and that's going to be your grains, precious metals, corn, gold, and OJ in particular. And then Mercury perihelion, That's that last time we had that, that was a big turn in the... Uh, Gold and also for your greens, so that would be corn, gold, OJ. Major change into corn. There you go, corn, gold, uh, oats. Nobody trades oats. OJ, soybeans, stocks, and wheat. And then we have Jupiter aligned with the U.S. chart there uh, for U.S. stocks, T bonds, and the U.S. dollar. And that's all happening right around the 28th. And then, but wait, that's not all. The night weekend of the 29th. 
mercury will turn retrograde, and that also is your grains, corn, and then because then Aquarius, you get going to throw in copper and soybeans, stocks, and wheat. And then I got this. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the January barometer. As January, you might know the old Wall Street adage, as January goes, so goes the year. I stumbled on that back about 1980 or so, and then I started uh, do, using January for an indication for the year. And then later on, I found out I was uh, doing fractals. I didn't even know I was doing fractals. But that's what this is. So we look at you look at the January price action and compare, and then I overlay the actual price on top of that. You can see how last year worked out. And even when it's uh, even when we we do get inversions, for example, the blue bars are saying that should be a low, and it turned out to be a high, and then we turned out looking for a high there, and it turned out to be a low. So, the t but the timing's still good, even when the direction is inverted. So that's pretty neat. And then here's a here's a, a radical idea. So another big uh, yearly indicator is, you know, this uh, this January barometer thing has about a 75% uh, track record of being right. The only thing better than that that I've ever found is the Super Bowl indicator, which supposedly has a track record of about 80% over the last 55, 54, 55 years. And guess what? They're both forecasting the same thing. So that means that... Uh, they, they, they should agree. Most uh, most years, they should, uh, high percentage of time, they should agree with each other. And here's the fun part. Uh, we know what the answer is for the January barometer at the end of January, and but the Super Bowl is not played for another week. So the January barometer should give you an indication of who's going to win the Super Bowl. So far, unless we have a big down here this week, uh, it's pointing to the NFC team. It would, it's the bullish team. The, the, for you folks who don't know, the NFL is divided into two conferences, the champion the NFC and AFC. The champion of each conference meets in the Super Bowl, and that's been a high percentage indicator whether the NFC team, which is bullish, or AFC team bearish wins. That's uh, There we go. So we're no, right I'm, now the indication is for the I'm NFC jealous. team, which would be no. – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What's that, that's Larry? What, that's what I wanted to hear to see what it was going to be. I don't know NFC from AFC or BFC or KFC, so I wanted okay. to know the team. Tampa Bay it. Buccaneers. We're going to pay a few bills. We'll be right back with Norm Winsky, and we'll be discussing hockey. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar. Silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit Direction 
precisioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, with Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, also known as his uh, trading name, uh, Norm Winsky. Go ahead, Norm. Okay, thanks, Larry. Okay, we're after doing the Dow Jones or S&P for about 20 years. And seeing that it worked really well, I thought, gee, is there any mar other markets I should try that on? As it turned out, I tried. I thought I'd do T-bonds because some guy on CNBC said that was the hardest market. There was a forecast. I said, I'll take that challenge. And so there we go. I also do about 25 other markets at a separate publication, all the different commodities and so forth. But just for fun, here's the T-bonds. I generate these forecasts in February after January is done for the whole year. So there you go. Then I overlay the black bars, the actual price, the blue bars, are was a forecast done back in February of 2020. And you can see that worked out pretty well, I think. I don't know what you think, Larry, but there you go. It's very okay. good. <laughs> and it's real simple. It doesn't require any advanced math. If it did, I couldn't do it. You know, right? I figured out a simple way to do these things, you know. My, some of my stuff looks complicated, but I, after, I, after I explain it, almost everybody who go takes one of my classes says, after I explain this stuff, it's really very simple. Nothing's over fifth grade level. Okay, other were, I don't know if I could do it or not. There we go. I, have some, I had somebody request, uh, I haven't done this for a while, show a day example of my day trading. We, I did. Here's a trade I did back on the 21st. Uh, most of these times, we do nothing with them. We just look at the market because most of the time, we don't trade this kind of stuff. We're just going sideways and so we wait for a certain price pattern at our magic time like that's what we had here at 347 on the 21st you can see it's going very uh, in a very orderly fashion up 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 would have sold on the close of the minute there and then you wait about six or seven minutes and you picked up uh, just about three and a half handles no big deal it's a small trade but just wanted to find an example for you how you can make a little bit of money in uh, just a few minutes you know right there we go. I have a day trading class for that if you're more interested in that sort of thing. So there we go. And now here's the, where you get the hook, get hooked up here with Norm. Here's my contact information. I got classes. I got a free day trading class. Only last, uh, if you have some experience in this, uh, you can probably do that in about 45 minutes. And then you have to, every day you do the system and practice, practice, practice. And send in a report and then it will be free 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 and i got the swing trading letter which is the stuff i just the kind of stuff i mostly showed you there and i do uh, in that class we got a five to six hour class for that and that i go into uh, teaching you i can reduce gain to about 10 or 15 minutes advanced fibonacci another 10 to 15 minutes and so forth and to show you all the different methods that i use in my letter and here we go here's how to get a hold of me i'm in Sunny Naples, Florida. It's sunny today, I think. And it's uh, 239 594 3939. There's my email in Wormwinsky at mbark with a Q in the middle. M A I L dot com. Or you can call me on Skype at nwinsky underscore one. Anybody have any questions there in the uh, de Tiger Den? 
Uh, no, the, you've answered the questions, but we do have one other question that someone sent in if we have a few minutes here to cover, and okay. that's about the uh, this big thing that's getting ready to happen here uh, in February called the Saturn squared Uranus. I'll put this up, Norm, so you can look at it in the den. That's going to happen and, on February the 17th, my birthday. Well, everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you'll take a look at that, how about being on on your birthday? Would you like to be on on the 17th? Maybe maybe before that. Okay. Well, we want you okay. to be happy, Norm. So can you, explain, can you explain to what the what the folks are looking at here with the Saturn squared Uranus? Because this is how I got interested in uh, astrology. Well, Saturn like Uranus this. is a 47-year, let's call it a synodical period. That's where you have two things and their relationship to each other and how long it takes for them to get together. Because Saturn's going around. It takes 29 and a half years for Saturn to go around the sun. Uranus takes 84 years. How long does it take this for Saturn? Uh, let's say they're together. How long does it take for Saturn to zip around and catch up with it where Uranus has moved ahead? You know, and so that's 47 years. And since we've got the square here, that's one fourth of the circle. And they won't be. Uh, the last time we had that would be about 47 years ago. I had to get my calculator out to figure out when that was. But uh, but probably back in the 70s, I'm guessing, right? Something like that. <laughs> And uh, that's a very important cycle. As a matter of fact, do you remember the foundation for the cycles? So these cycles, I think they had that. They did their big ones, big, <laughs> big mega study where they listed the the uh, importance of all the cycles. And I think that was in the top three there. You know, Saturn and Uranus. You know, hey, uh, it just came to me. You know, you you know the date April twenty eighth, nineteen forty two, Larry. No, sir, I don't. That was the retest of the uh, 32 low, and then really? it was up, and then it was up, up and away from then on. Well, guess what? That week we had Saturn conjunct Uranus. Okay, so that's a good one to be watching. Yeah, so that's a, it's a okay. big stuff. In the 89, when we had the conjunction again, it wasn't so much a low as more of a political thing. I think it maybe occurred in Capricorn, which is a political sign, and the walls came tumbling. Remember that? And the wall came tumbling down. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Saturn is the planet of limitations. Uranus is the the, the planet that can bust through the limitations, and so mm -hmm. that's what happened. They knocked down the wall. Uh, well, those who don't know, we're talking about the Iron Curtain and the and the Berlin Wall and so forth. You know. Okay. Well, listen. Thanks for joining us today, and let us know would you like to come back on near the next, uh, which will be a full moon, I guess, because we've got a new moon coming up now. No, full moon now. New moon is on the fourth of uh, February, which is a Chinese New Year. Is that correct? Chinese New Year is coming in the middle of February, I believe, this time. Okay. Well, I know it's related to the. Lunar yeah, cycle. I would think you would, I... you, you, you would know. Yeah. You're, uh... <laughs> yeah. The boss. Yeah. She's you're the boss. Kind of I'll ask that. What's yeah. that? She's the boss, so I'll certainly ask her. Yeah, talk to the boss there, you know, right? Okay. okay listen, thanks for joining us, Norman. We'll have you on again soon, okay? Great. Looking forward to helping some of your folks, Larry. You bet. Call me. Oh, I will. All right. See you thanks later, a lot. Buddy. Bye. You bet. Norm Winsky, Astro Trends in Naples, Florida. Okay, folks, so getting back to that chart of that Saturn Uranus, that's how I got started. Uh, the, the interest that really peaked when I was doing the book with uh, Dr. Miller, uh, it showed the 1974 bottom where it had a lot of these conjunctions, and all of the planets were lined up on either the right or the left side of that circle, which is the natal chart. And that was just another way of showing that these cycles were coming together at the same time. That was the, uh, I think, I don't remember, oh, synchronicity. That's what uh, Jim Hurst referred to it as synchronicity, that these things, he was just looking at the dates, had nothing to do with astrology. But when these like 1836, uh, 4872, if they all lined up together like that, that tells you that there's a, uh, you know, cycles coming together and it was very, very important. And uh, that's all I knew at the time. And, you know, I still don't understand it a lot. All I know is that when you see something like this, Pay very, very close attention to it. So it will be something that will be interesting. The one thing that I really feel strongly about is that we are going to see volatility go off the charts. You know, and I'm talking about just take a look at what we've had here uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, you'll see that we've not been above this uh, high of about 50 uh, very many times, one, two, three, four, five or six times in the last uh, 25 years. And I think we're going to be trading above that uh, not just spiking, but we're going to be trading above that level 
during 2021. And I think that'll be something that people will have a great opportunity uh, to profit from if we see these patterns unfold like we think they're going to. So just remind ourselves, we've got a break here, 877-927-6648. And we'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, an essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back. And stocks are still relatively strong with the exception of the NASDAQ. It's down about eight, uh, eight, eight, eight points or 80 points right now. And the others are still uh, quite strong. Now, if we take a look at a couple other things that, that we need to focus on here, uh, one is the a lot of conference, a lot of talking about the Bitcoin, folks. I just wanted to uh, bring this up to you too, just just because of patterns, folks. You know, we had a nice move in the corn, nice move in the beans, based on the same type of pattern. What you're looking here in Bitcoin is nothing more than an ABCD pattern that's uh, started, you know, way back. Uh, it happens to be a four-hour chart starting about uh, January the uh, 8th. And here we are coming in three weeks later. And it looks like the 382 down there marked in that red box comes in at 28,000. Now, we've been to 28,900, and that's pretty close mathematically because that's the perfect ABCD. But it's not the 382, and as 
Mr. Uh, Einstein said, uh, before God was numbers. So we want to watch that number of 28,000 in the uh, the uh, Bitcoin, if you're trading it. If not, just look at it for technical reasons, because these patterns repeat over and over again. And they don't work all the time. You know, we saw corn and, and beans work absolutely perfectly. Uh, yesterday, the, <clears throat> the gold also uh, worked very, very nicely with the ABCD. And the euro has been really perfect with the ABCD, but they don't work all the time. And that's the secret here is if they did work all the time, we wouldn't be on the air because everybody could see it. So we'll see. Now, I, I've had questions about the Robin Hood people, folks. I don't know anything about those folks. They're probably very similar to the old guys that uh, – he used to do the, uh, uh, I forget what they call that trading, um, you know, zero, I, I can't remember with uh, what was the guy's name. Boy, oh boy, you get me confused here. Anyway, thanks for the, the bell is going to save me on this one, boys and girls. Bam, bam, bam. Judge is ruling. We'll see you guys tomorrow on the flip side. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.